In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. In today's epistle, St. Paul gives a lengthy listing of sins of the flesh, the evil of which can be seen simply by looking at the state of the world in general, and of various nations in particular. Such sins easily excite disgust, horror, and shame in us because we can easily see their malice and evil effects. It is immediately evident that by committing them, man becomes more and more like an animal. And so we work very hard to overcome or to protect ourselves against the vices of concupiscence. But in our diligence against these vices, we must not allow a still greater enemy to find an entrance. We also stand under an obligation to apply serious diligence and caution against spiritual vices, of which pride is the first and greatest, the vice which transformed Lucifer into Satan. God banished angels from heaven for their pride. We cannot pretend that we ourselves have a chance to enter therein if we do not keep ourselves in a state of humility. St. Peter Damien felt confident enough to state that the Virgin Mary herself, with her incomparable virginity, could not have entered into the glory of Christ without humility. Innumerable things in the earthly life of the incarnate Son of God are worthy of imitation. He might have said, Learn of me to be chaste, humble, prudent, just, wise, etc. But he says very specifically, Learn of me because I am a meek and humble of heart. Consider the example of humility found at the very beginning of St. John's Gospel. We have at the very start the sublime words, In the beginning was the Word. Shortly thereafter it follows, And the Word was made flesh. Our familiarity with this dogma of faith is such that we accept it without question, but we must not fail to realize that by this union of creator with created, that the highest was united with the lowest. And we must take advantage of whatever means we must, whatever is within our power, and therefore within our duty to fully conform ourselves to this humility of the Sacred Heart. All those who are, who are baptized have been planted in grace, and all those who are in the state of grace have the minimum of humility. If they regain their if, excuse me, if they retain their baptismal innocence and persevere steadfastly in the sanctifying grace which they have received in their regeneration, they may, from that hour forward, perpetually grow into a closer and closer conformity to the likeness of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. The first condition on our part is this, a constant fidelity to that grace of our baptism. But there is no cause for despair if we are conscious of even long periods of our lives in which we failed to correspond to our baptismal grace. Perhaps we are conscious from our earliest childhood of having offended God by a multitude of petty faults, 
which in time grew in a number and a deliberation, becoming eventually firmly entrenched in our character. Such souls, even if they have never forfeited their baptismal grace, may nevertheless have stunted the continual expansion of the spiritual life which was planted in them in their regeneration. Perhaps we have even broken away from our baptismal grace altogether, casting behind ourselves the law of God, thereby departing from the way of holiness. Again, I say there is no cause for despair because the remedy for such falls is the sacrament of penance. The world hates the confessional, but those who understand that it has been instituted by God and is regulated by the church as a remedy, not as a torture, have no fear whatsoever of approaching this merciful tribunal. They understand, even if they are conscious of many sins, of many faults and weaknesses, just how easy it is, when all things are taken into consideration, to make a good confession. They do not hesitate to bring their black spots dark stains and deep wounds to the doctor that is a duly trained confessor. But we ought to strive to be among those who find confession very easy because they are free from the stains and wounds of an evil life. They who have retained their baptismal innocence may have many omissions, infirmities, a great many faults of which they are guilty, but no habits of indulged sin. If we have not managed to retain our baptismal innocence, we ought at least to seek to repair our lives to the point that it is equally easy for us to approach the confessional. It is certainly possible for us to do so. While it, is while it is possible for us to avoid any venial sin taken individually, we are, of course, unable to avoid all venial sins taken together without a special privilege, such as that which was conferred on the Blessed Virgin. Taking into consideration just how many times we find ourselves falling into venial sins from day to day, we can see just how great is the love of God which is to be found in the Immaculate Heart of Mary. This particular heart may be compared to the bush which grew on the mountain of God, spoken of in the book of Exodus, whereupon Moses was told, the place where thou standest is holy ground. The mountain itself is a figure of the Blessed Virgin, to whom St. Gregory the Great applies the words of Isaiah the prophet, a mountain on the top of mountains, because she is the true mountain of God, a mountain of holiness. And again, the bush is a figure of this heart, being first a lowly shrub, signifying its humility. The thorns on the bush signify the bitter sorrow and unspeakable anguish which pierce to the heart of the Mother of God, suffering which she accepted for the love of God and the salvation of mankind. Most strikingly, the bush was ablaze with fire but was not burned. To be sure, this is a great miracle yet it is only a figure of the far greater wonder which took place in the heart of the Blessed Virgin. Her heart was inflamed with love for God to such a degree of intensity that this sacred flame would have consumed her corporal life if she had not been miraculously preserved 
in the midst of such fervor. Clearly, we will never come close to such a degree of charity. But if we do not hesitate to petition for an increase of it, she who does possess that degree will obtain for us the graces to be enkindled at least as far as is necessary to burn away our pride and avoid being consumed for eternity in the conflagration prepared for the devil and his cohorts. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.